I'd like to acknowledge the Kumba uh, Murray people and their elders, past, present, and spectacularly emerging. And I acknowledge the lineage of uh, this beautiful place and their connection to the land and the sea here. And I uh, offer our respect and our gratitude for being here. Here's a tune called I Wanna Know Dub with a little intro of Bark. Drift and fall And I look to your human form So beautiful I hear you dripping hundred words On the songs of birds As you're flying from the sea Singing a sacred invitation To come and play out This divine union Between you and me Well I wanna know here Where all the rainbows go What do you know Yeah. 
Oh, oh, oh. 
Hey guys, it's Kim and I'm on Desert TV at Mo's Desert Clubhouse here today in the studio with me. I have Shannon and OJ from Band of Frequencies. Welcome to the studio. Thanks, Kim. Hi. Thanks for coming uh, all the way from the Sunshine Coast today to perform for uh, the crew at home and the crew uh, that are here as well. It's really exciting to have you in the studio. Uh, Band of Frequencies, of course, being one of those bands I like to refer to you, and you probably hate this, but as a band of all stars, uh, you guys play in a number of different bands um, around the world and in Australia. And uh, when you guys come together, I think it's absolute pure magic so oh. thank you for coming and sharing your goodness here with us today oh cheers thank you uh now we have uh, had a listen to a few of your songs already today uh a few of your tracks have been played and we we're going to talk about uh some of the music that you've got that we've just heard and some of the music that we've got coming up but one of the tracks the first one that we've just listened to now tell me a little bit about it because it is what 15 minutes of Gold right there. <laughs> yeah, it goes on a bit of a journey. There's a few, yeah, it's a bit of a, a DNA of band of frequencies in this track, actually. So the intro is actually a uh, tune called Bark, which we recorded at our place in El Shabby down in our ocean shores for a um, surf film collaboration called Under the Sun with Cyrus Sutton. And that was an amazing recording session. And it's an instrumental, predominantly instrumental soundtrack. We don't get to play that much. So the intro comes from that tune, Bark, and uh, then it moves into the um, dub version of I Want to Know, which is a classic kind of a evolution of a piece because the first version was an aphrodisiac track from mm. which album? Walken album, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have Nick, Nick Ags and uh, Aphrodisiac was a band that we were in from the late 90s, early 2000s and sort of that track then was an instrumental tune and we wrote some lyrics to it and recorded it for the Band of Frequencies album Rise Like the Sun and that was like a... That was a blues kind of a driving kind of triple thing. So this particular version then takes it another step and another stage into a dub version and um, goes on a bit of a journey through different, the different sections you just heard and um, made all the more special by playing along with the, the footage, of course, that um, George Greeno's sort of given us the green light to play along to, which is an absolute pleasure and privilege. Mm, epic footage, yeah. It's pretty cool. Can mm. you tell me a little bit, um, Band of Frequencies, you do cover off a lot of different genres and mm. I would say that uh, you would be one of those bands that definitely melds. Uh, I mean, every band says that though, really, don't they? Mm. But I really feel like Band of Frequencies, you do pull in all the different elements of, of your music. Mm. What what do you describe Band of Frequencies as? Like if you were to tell somebody, what, what do you describe them as? Yeah, it's sort of been one of those questions. It's been hard to answer a long time. But I've thought of that the other day. I was thought if it was 1968 and you went on a long, like a five-year trip from like 68 to 73, 74, and you went through New York, New Orleans, caught funk, soul, jazz, went through to Jamaica and caught Jamaica dub and went through across there to Africa and back up through, I don't know, where would you go from there? <laughs> If you're buying records the whole way through and then you came back and you had the record, the box of records you bought on that trip and you put them all on and thought, let's make a band that plays all that stuff, that's what Band of Frequencies kind of is. <laughs> does that make any sense? It does. It's a good, uh, it's a good picture. I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's a good uh, album as well. Like, you know, one track from each of those countries on one piece and one vinyl would, yeah. would be Feels beautiful. Like goes from Hendrix to kind of like, yeah, all kinds of things all mixed together. Cool. Easily influenced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So do you find yourselves on stage when you are performing, um, like is everything written and rehearsed to the T or is it quite ad-lib and a lot of elements? Uh, most of it's ad-lib, I think. Okay. Uh, we, we do like that in our music. We've always been a jam band. I think from the start we came mm. came into it just jamming and and as you can tell by the first song we were talking about, it's just gone through an evolution. We can't help it. Every gig we get on, that tune might morph into something else. Yeah. And then we love it. It's like a whole new song. Um, but, you know, there are songs that are written, like Shan's got some incredible songs that he's written and, and we stay true to the form of those. But mm. I think deep down we just love the journey of a song and where it could take the audience and, you know, it's interaction. You know, everyone gets involved. It's not just us going, here's that song you love. It's mm. like come with us, you know, come for a journey. Do you think after, you know, a few more years this first song that we've just heard is going to become like your full set and there's just like <laughs> one one track just evolved to, <laughs> to a full 45, 50-minute sort of set? Is that I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in that way. Grateful Dead, here we go. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good fun. We try and work out how we can have the best of both worlds. So we sort of have these cue points where we know we're going somewhere, we know where we're going 
um, we just don't know when they, we're going to actually go there. So we're going to let it fl- like let it kind of go as in its own direction, and then we know that okay, this feels like a time to wrap it up. We're going to move here now, and so then yeah. Yeah, open the next door into the next room. And you two together, you guys have known each other for a long time. How long have you guys been playing together? Um, not just in band of frequencies, but in total. Uh, you know, is it a, a ten year a relationship here, or what are we talking? Oh, I'm going to show our, show our age yeah, here. Do it. Uh, <laughs> we met in 1995. Yep. Um, we were doing like a jazz clinic. It was a summer clinic, I think. When we were in a, I was on the Sunshine Coast in a band called Soul Prism. We were trying to play jazz. OJ's a great at playing jazz, and his older brother is an amazing playing jazz. <laughs> anyway, so we went to the summer clinic to try and get some of the jazz to rub off on us. <laughs> anyway, I found myself in a group with uh, with OJ. We got put in these groups, and um, we just started playing Herbie Hancock chameleon. We didn't, we didn't want to play jazz, <laughs> <laughs> play jazz. so we started playing this play funk fuck. fusion stuff, whatever it was. And then we, yeah, so then a few years later, we ended up in Aphrodisiac together, and um, it all went from there. Thanks to that summer workshop, hey. So a few oh. years. A few, few years. A few years. <laughs> Must yeah. have been, yeah, it's a lot of time. It's good. Uh, now tell me about this next track that we're going to hear uh, and tell me a little bit about the background because uh, it might be a bit hard for the viewers at home to see all of the uh, disp- AV that's going on, but for those that are here and they can see it again later, I guess, um, tell us about the next track and, and what's happening. Yeah, well, hopefully. Actually, if you can't see it, you can probably check it out on the internet. It's the George Greeno film clip to All I've Found. And uh, it was a collaboration with George Greeno. He gave us a whole bunch of his B-roll footage from the films that he made in the late 60s, The Innermost Limits of Pure Fun, um, mostly. And we got a chance to look through all this footage that he'd made the film out of and grab these B-roll sections and write lyrics based on some of the scenes in there. And then once I'd written the lyrics and written the song, we we recorded it with uh, Jeff at Black Box to go on the Rise Like the Sun record. Then we got to go up to George's house and he... um, edited the film with us from all his old footage and so all the footage is um it's all George's and all edited by him up at the his, his place. I have these amazing visuals of uh when you say old footage being like the actual like movie reels please tell yeah. me it was movie yeah, reels. Yeah, yeah. Oh my mm. god really. But next level again so he pulled the camera apart and he made the first ever he made a fiberglass housing a waterproof fiberglass housing for the film camera the 16 millimeter film mounted it on his back it's like a nine pound sort of thing and he would actually ride his kneeboard or flexi spoon fiberglass thing and also a surf mat at Lennox, like uncrowded, beautiful six foot plus Lennox and he would get barreled and film what it looks like from inside the barrel and he was the first ever person to bring that view and that experience to people who weren't, hadn't hadn't been barreled or couldn't get barreled and he was was the first one ever. So now you see a lot of those GoPro footage of people getting barreled but no one before that point had ever seen that point of view unless you were getting barreled. So George Greeno brought that view to the world for the first time ever. And this is your film clip? Here's some of that footage is in the film clip. And in the film clip also you can see there's a section of him riding at Lennox on Velo, one of his flexible spoon knee boards and you can see the camera on his back and you see him they kind of pull into position and get barreled and then you see the shot that he's getting at that time. We actually lined up the actual shot that he took and the wave he was on. Crazy. That's, that's yeah, pretty epic. he's nuts. He, he's actually <laughs> quite famous from Big Wednesday yep. uh, filming the footage on a surf mat out at, um, you know, uh, like Sunset, I think most of it. Or when was it? Yeah, I'm not In exactly Hawaii. Sure. But, um, yeah, out there with the surf mat and this massive camera on his back mm. capturing footage for Big Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. We, we could talk what for hours yeah. about George yeah. actually. Yeah. I mean, we can. Yeah. We can sit here oh, all day seriously, about, Seriously, like know. he's an absolute yeah. legend, yeah, and well, an innovator and a design legend and one of the best surfers. At that time he was the only person doing what he was doing, absolutely. And I guess that partnered with the music of Band of Frequencies, we have like an actual perfect mix right here in my mind anyway. So uh, thank you very much for bringing the, the film element to your, to your set tonight as well.
Hey, this is Band of Frequencies. And you're on Desert TV here at Mo's Desert Clubhouse. Yo! Yo! This is our features, Mr. Adam Felton on the drums, Mr. Nui Moon on the percussion. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise.
Cheers, folks. This is the last track for the evening. Thanks once again for tuning in. Thanks for coming down. It's called Sunray.